Today I'll be introducing you to the uh, ILS Birdie internal recycle reactor. Um, this reactor is a collaboration between ILS and the University of Erlangen, um, which developed the technology originally in the group of um, Professor Wasserscheid. We worked very closely with um, Mr. Schmax, who's the original uh, inventor of this, and we have an exclusive license to sell this worldwide. Um, the Birdie reactor is basically a fixed bed reactor that operates in recycle mode. So it looks a bit like a batch reactor, but in reality it's a fixed bed. Uh, either a catalyst particles or, for example, a single catalyst pellet can be tested here. Uh, you feed gas, you remove gas continuously, so this is a continuously operated reactor, and you have a rotor stator system inside um, where this rotor spins at up to 10,000 RPMs, uh, generating an internal recycle, meaning gas is fed, gas is removed, but the gas passes over the catalyst bed many more times than it's inserted or removed. And by doing this, you basically have a CSTR, so a completely stirred, uh, uh, stirred tank reactor here, uh, completely back mixed, and hence you have no concentration or temperature gradients within the reactor. Um, you need this kind of a reactor if you're doing kinetic testing at higher conversion levels, uh, so-called uh, integral conversion levels, uh, as opposed to differential reactors, which are operated at very low conversion levels. Um, some of the special things about this type of reactor uh, versus other suppliers on the market is that the stirring rate is very high. As I said before, 10,000 RPMs. Um, this makes it possible to operate this reactor at lower pressures. Um, might seem kind of counterintuitive that lower pressures are more problematic, but the problem is that lower pressures, gas density is lower, and hence uh, a rotor such as the one used here, or turbine, um, moves less gas. Um, so typical Birdie reactors operate well at, say, 30 bars or higher. In this case, we can operate up to 100 bars in this reactor, but we can also operate atmospherically. And especially if you're doing things like alkane conversions, which is a very hot topic at the moment, you typically want to work at low pressures and high temperatures. So here we can do basically atmospheric to 100 bars, and the latest version that we made uh, goes up to 750 degrees Celsius. Um, one of the other big advantages of this design is we use an electromagnet for stirring the reactor. So there's no moving parts, there's no motor coupled to a magnetic coupling. It's a pure electromagnet which generates a rotating magnetic field, which then, as I said before, stirs the rotor at up to 10,000 RPMs. Um, I'll open this reactor in a second and show you a bit what the inside looks like. We provide the computer control for controlling the stirrer, and there's basically, in this case, heating elements which are mounted directly in the reactor jacket um, to make it um, uh, more dynamic so we can heat it more quickly if necessary we could also include a reactor cooling in most cases people don't want so i've removed the bolts now to make it easier to access the reactor um, they're mounted here on the side typically you would use a torque wrench for doing this um, the gas feed and exit lines are located on the side of the the bottom of the reactor so that you have really easy access to the top you're not stuck with a bunch of pipes in, in, in the way um, opening the reactor then is quite trivial after that you just uh, loosen this handle at the top and then you can raise the entire lid very easily it's not heavy be done with one hand. We have a VCR connector on the side because one of the thermocouples protrudes into the catalyst basket itself. So you loosen the VCR coupling, pull back the thermocouple bit, and then you can just pull the catalyst basket straight out. Here you can see the catalyst basket itself. This is the hole for the, the thermocouple to be uh, uh, poked basically into the, uh, the volume of just above the catalyst bed in this case. The catalyst bed itself is held in with a wire mesh at the bottom of the top. Typically, the client will use a bit of quartz wool as well to make sure we don't entrain any fines, which could be quite damaging to a rotor, which is stirring it up to 10,000 RPMs. Um, yeah, as you see, it's very easy to open and close. It's very easy to load catalyst. It's very compact um, as well and uh, very user-friendly. In this case, we've got a graphite seal in this reactor, which can easily be removed here. So this is the metal ring between the two. Um, easy access to, to changing the graphite to, or in, sometimes the silver seal rings is, is important in terms of user maintenance. We use uh, water-cooled bearings as well to protect the, uh, uh, the bearings from, uh, from thermal wear over time. And we also have a slight nitrogen purge coming in from the top to minimize exposure of the bearings to uh, corrosive media. Um,